welcome back to another episode of the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. I'm your host, Neil C. Hughes, ready as ever to explore the intersections of technology and daily life and business life too. And today, I want to take a deep dive into the world of radio, but not as you know it, because in our digital age, this age-old medium is undergoing somewhat of a radical transformation. And who better to guide us through this changing landscape than our guest today, Rich Stern, CEO of TuneIn. Now, TuneIn, as you probably know, is a leading live streaming and on-demand audio service that is at the forefront of radio's digital revolution. And they're leveraging technology advancements while still honouring the timeless value of human connection in radio listening. So with his extensive experience in entertainment and streaming platforms, I want to learn more about how Rich is steering tuning to navigate the challenges and seize the opportunities of this particular digital transformation. And also doing this with an emphasis on inclusivity, diversity in all the content and product development that they're working on. But more than anything, the shift in radio distribution from hyper-local to hyper-global to predicting the future of audio streaming, our conversation today promises to have a unique blend of nostalgia, present realities, and a glimpse into the future. So buckle up and hold on tight, because no matter where you're listening in the world, it's time for me to beam your ears stateside where Rich Stern, CEO of TuneIn, is waiting to speak with us today. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell everyone listening a little about who you are and what you do? Well, th- thank you for having me, Neil. My name is Rich Stern. I'm the CEO of TuneIn. TuneIn is the world's largest platform for live audio. We've got about 100,000 radio stations from around the world, 5 million podcasts, and about 120,000 audiobooks. Um, and really, we are uh, uh, all about a celebration of the human voice and trying to make the world a little bit smaller by taking all of this conversation, all of these broadcasts from around the world, and putting them in the palm of your hand. It's an incredibly cool role that you have there. And one of the things I always try and do with my guests is before we start talking about your current role is find out a little bit more about your origin story, where your passion for this came from, what put you on this uh, road that you're on right now. So I I do believe you've got extensive experience in various entertainment and streaming platforms. So can you tell me a little bit more about your origin story and the unique perspectives that it's given you to uh, bring to TuneIn as its CEO? Sure, sure. You know, I mean, from my perspective, um, it's as much about circumstance as intent. Mm. Uh, I was very fortunate to start my career, you know, right around the same time that Web 1.0 was happening. And as my career progressed and I got more focused on media, you know, I've had this fantastic opportunity to participate in the digital transformation of media. Um, and so, you know, whether that be with film and television during my time at Amazon Studios or uh, video games and digital media with Sony PlayStation or audiobooks and publishing with Audible, um, I just had the opportunity to be there at the right place at the right time as digital and technology were intersecting with these traditional media categories and, and had an opportunity to invent. Um, and I feel very fortunate. And it's very similar with what we're doing at TuneIn right now. You know, radio as a media category has been around for over 100 years. But, you know, as as we see it, you know, in its digital incarnation, uh, it's still day one. And, you know, we're we're super excited about the possibilities that digital transformation presents. And hopefully as a platform, we'll be a catalyst for that transformation. And you've been involved in very high-profile digital transformations across multiple organizations. So I'd love to learn more about some of your insights on the digital transformation of radio, specifically the future of the AM radio that we all grew up with, but in the contents of streaming and podcasting trends. What are you seeing there? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that radio as a category is very interesting because, you know, at one point, radio was ubiquitous, which is what you really want for any media category. Um, Any place a customer might want to listen, um, they can. And therefore, every place an advertiser might want to reach a listener, they can. You know, when I was growing up, 
you know, I had a clock radio in my bedroom. You know, there was a radio in our shower. There was a radio in the car. There was a radio in the living room. And so it was everywhere. Um, over the last 10 to 15 years, though, the number of AM, FM, and DAB uh, receivers has continued to fall. And for many people, the last place that they have an AM, FM, or DAB uh, radio is, is in their vehicle. And, you know, we're right at the precipice of EV car manufacturers saying, why, why do I need this? I have a, 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 an infotainment system and I've got a host of digital entertainment options. Why do I still have this analog tech uh, in a next generation vehicle? And it's a, an existential crisis for broadcasters, especially AM broadcasters, as they kind of reach the, the end of the road of analog distribution and really need to lean into digital distribution. And the goal with digital is to try to recreate that ubiquity, that ease of access for the customer. Um, going from a situation where maybe an AM listener only has access in their vehicle to a place where they have access on their smartphone, on their smart speaker, with their voice assistant, in their connected vehicle, um, so they can once again listen anywhere they might want to. And, you know, in our view as a company, you know, the content of AM radio is as good as it has ever been. Um, and that's to say it's vital. Um, but the distribution strategy of relying on terrestrial broadcast, I think that sort of run its course. And so it's an exciting time. It's also a, a, a nerve wracking time as the industry tries to cross over. But, you know, there are many examples, whether it be with the digital, you know, the digital distribution of music going from, you know, records, tapes, CDs to digital download MP3s to the streaming services that are commonplace today, or, you know, with film and television going from terrestrial broadcast to digital streaming, this has been done before and it's been done with a lot of success. So I have high hopes that the industry overall will benefit, but, but this is a, a period of intense transformation, especially on the AM side that we see right now. Completely agree with you. And I would also add in there the introduction of so-called AI DJs and the and how that's presenting new challenges to traditional radio, especially in a digital world where listeners just simply refuse to listen to a song they don't like for more than 20 seconds. So I'm curious, how do you view the comparison between AI DJs and human DJs and personalization, etc.? And what impact is this having on the entire listening experience and the future expectations of listeners too? Well, you know, I think that it's really important to understand, you know, fundamentally what does a customer or a listener get from listening to radio and inviting us into the routines of their daily life? Yeah. And we've done a lot of surveys on this as well as, you know, there's been research on this from various industry groups. And surprisingly, the number one benefit that a listener gets from radio is companionship. Mm. Having a, a co-pilot, if you will, to move through the rituals of daily life um, whether that be uh, talking about topical events that are locally relevant to you, talking about weather, talking about news, talking about sports, or talking about the music that you're listening to and giving you that perspective, it's as much about the information as it is about the voice, the human being that's on the other side of that broadcast and the companionship that they provide. And I think that that's where this notion of replacing on-air talent with uh, algorithms and with synthetic voices sort of misses that point. Um, I think when the listener knows that, that what they're listening to is a glorified playlist that's being DJed by a, a, a voice assistant, basically, um, it loses that core value proposition of being connected to another human being. Um, and I think that there's a reason why, you know, in various incarnations, this idea of programmatically generated radio has not succeeded after multiple attempts. And it's not about the accuracy of the voices, and it's not necessarily about, you know, the quality of the playlists that the algorithms produce. It's about that human connection, and that can't really be replicated in a synthetic way. Um, the audience knows the difference. 
hundred percent with you. And as somebody that works from home in a small room, writing for a living, I always have BBC Six Music on for just about every reason that you just mentioned there. And, and I'm curious though, what what are the challenges of building entertainment products and services today in this co- interconnected world that we find ourselves in? And maybe also share some of your experiences from everything that you mentioned there, Sony, PlayStation, Amazon Studios, Audible, and now indeed TuneIn. Well, I, I think probably one of the, the biggest challenges for radio in particular is that, you know, radio is highly fragmented. You know, there's over 100,000 different broadcasters that we work with on the platform today, and that's the majority, but not all. And they're highly geographically distributed. Meaning that, you know, we may have a broadcaster whose market is a single city or a single portion of one state in the United States. And so one, you know, in that fragmentation, trying to bring, you know, a one size fits all solution for digital distribution is challenging because everyone has a slightly different perspective on what they would like their digital strategy to be and what the outcomes and the goals of that strategy should be. But then secondly, you know, many of them see their businesses as being exclusively local, tied to the market in which they broadcast today. And in some cases, haven't even really thought through, well, what would happen if I'm no longer shackled to the radius of my broadcast tower? But, you know, if I'm a jazz station in New Orleans, if I can have listeners all around the world, and how would I structure my business if that was the case? And so these are, are some fundamental issues that you know have uh, uh, smart people, smarter than myself, you know, thinking really hard about how to make this happen. Um, the good news is, I think as we've studied the digital transformation of other media categories, what we know happens is that there is an opportunity to access audiences and to create monetization opportunities that simply don't exist today. Um, And I think we can see that in the incredible growth we've seen in streaming for television and film. And we can see the incredible growth that streaming has brought to the music industry and how it's transformed their business. At the same time, what is fundamentally a great song or a great television show or a great film hasn't really changed. So the artistic medium, you know, continues to thrive, even though the distribution, the monetization has completely transformed. And conceiving of what that means for radio, how radio goes from hyper local to hyper global, and also, you know, how we come up with solutions and technology that create a very big tent, that create high leverage ability and allow many broadcasters to use a common infrastructure like TuneIn to deliver their content. That, that's where our, our thinking is going today. And you know there are some challenges with that, but also massive opportunities that have us very excited and, and bullish about the future of radio as a category. And before you came on the podcast today, I was doing a little research on you, and I learned that as a founder in Four Daughters Entertainment, you've also uh, been a strong advocate for inclusion and diversity right across the media industry. So uh, can you tell me a little bit more about how these values are also reflected in TuneIn's approach to content and and any product development that you have there? Absolutely. I mean, it's a common, you know, place statement inside the company that we want to build a company and we want to build a product that's as diverse and as inclusive and representative as the broadcast audience that we serve around the world. And, you know, TuneIn's in over 120 countries around the world in multiple languages. We have varying political ideologies, varying musical tastes that are represented on the platform. You know, as a company, we have no vested interest in amplifying one viewpoint or one cohort of listeners over another. We really want to be a platform that has everything for everyone. We don't put our our finger on the scale, so to speak. We let the listeners vote with their ears and decide what content and what broadcasters they believe are uh, uh, who they choose to give their mind share to. Um, and I think as a company, you know, given the business that we're in, it's very, very important 
that we hold those values dear. You know, what makes radio wonderful as a medium is you can see such diversity of viewpoints, such diversity in content creation. And we think that that's a great strength. Um, and radio, because of the fragmentation that I spoke about before, um, it's not content that's created by one corporation or five major corporations. It is hundreds of thousands of small businesses uh, around the world that create global radio as a category. So diversity, inclusion, making space for everyone, um, I think is a key tenant of our company, but also a core strength of what has made radio enduring um, over the last century. And hopefully we'll keep it vibrant in the century ahead. And with your role at TuneIn, I'm curiously, how, how do you find yourself naturally leveraging your previous experiences with Sony, PlayStation, Amazon Studios, and, and Audible, etc., to then enhance the user experience and expand TuneIn's user base? There seems to be a lot of synergies there. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think that it, it is a very similar story in the sense that, you know, the the first thing that that became clear to me in my career is that you know, you have to separate the artistic medium in any of these media categories from the distribution and monetization approach. Just meaning that, again, you know, what makes for great television or what makes for great film or what makes a great song or a great newspaper article or a great radio station, that is the media. That's the artistic side of this business. That's the content creation. And those things do not necessarily get reinvented in a digital transformation. They can benefit from the access to data and the understanding of audience that digital provides. But fundamentally, you know, that artistic medium needs to continue thriving and the creative economy that underpins it needs to be supported. On the distribution and monetization side, everything changes. You know, radio today um, in many markets is distributed through AM, FM, or DAB terrestrial transmission. It requires a tower or a multiplexer in the case of DAB. Um, and in many cases, it is a one-way transmission that goes out with very, very little direct measurement of audience or engagement. All of that engagement data comes from sort of third-party measurements and for proxies. That changes dramatically in digital. In digital, we know who's listening, how long they're listening, where they're listening from, what they were listening to before they changed the channel. So there's an opportunity for an explosion of data um, that allows us to understand and serve the radio audience much better in digital than, than many of us could in terrestrial. But the second thing, and, and perhaps even more important than the data, is the ubiquity. Um, and if you look at the golden age of radio, what you can't help but noticing is that it was ubiquitous. Anywhere a uh, 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 a listener wanted to um, consume content, they could. Um, and today in terrestrial broadcast, that just isn't the case anymore. The number of places you know that the average, well, just say American household has an AM FM radio, it, it is greatly reduced. And in many cases, it's limited solely to the vehicle. Mm. Um, and digital changes that. You know, on TuneIn, we have over 200 different connected device platforms that we can serve with radio content. And this is everything from, you know, sophisticated next generation electric vehicles like Tesla's to Samsung smart refrigerators to Amazon uh, Alexa devices and Google Home or Google Home devices. Um, to Greg Norman golf carts and exercise bikes in lifetime fitness. Um, all of these devices can consume content digitally and allow listeners to access this content. And that kind of ubiquity, you know, if I could zero in on one thing that makes um, uh, uh, any medium thrive, it's that you've reduced all the friction for a listener to be able to access the content that they want. 
Um, and if you look at Netflix, if you look at Spotify and other media categories, these businesses um, really came into their own once they were ubiquitous in their customers' lives. When they could be accessed from any device, anywhere uh, a customer wanted to listen to a song or you know wanted to stream a television show or a movie. Um, our goal at TuneIn is to create that same ubiquity in digital um, for radio. And we believe that when that is the case, um, the content, which is really what this is all about at the end of the day, ultimately wins out. Um, and we believe that you know radio content continues to remain a vital part uh, of our listeners' lives. Um, but we have to understand that you know most of the folks that will listen to radio, they need it integrated into their digital lives. Um, that's how they consume content today. Um, hanging on to uh, terrestrial distribution, um, it it continues to get diminishing returns. And so, you know, we believe that spending time uh, and focusing on the digital side of distribution, recreating that ubiquity, is something that's incredibly important and something that that TuneIn can offer to the industry uh, in a way that's very compelling. And this is uh, uh, kind of a rehash of again everything I've experienced in film and television, everything I've experienced in games, everything I, you know I've experienced in publishing. Um, recreating that ubiquity in the digital world usually leads to a much larger audience, many new compelling revenue opportunities, but ultimately, you know, a second life or a new life for these media categories that in many cases dramatically changes how we view them and how we integrate them into our daily lives. And I'm curious, just to expand on that a little, how would you say TuneIn is aiming to stand out in this increasingly crowded audio audio streaming market? And what would you say are the, the key competitive advantages that you see for a company like TuneIn right now? Well, for us, you know, audio as a category is is very diverse. You know, so simply saying audio for us, you know, is almost like saying, how do you stand out in the food service cash? Yeah. Right. Um, there's audiobooks, there's podcasts, there's music, and then there's what TuneIn does, um, and what what I think we do better than anyone in the world, which is live audio. And this is broadcasts from terrestrial radio, but also simulcast from news and sports television broadcasts with partners like CNN or Sky News or, or whatnot. And that live component is really our core area of expertise. And it really transforms the value of having TuneIn, you know, installed on your device uh, and in your daily life. Because, you know, every day, hundreds of thousands of content creators are creating hours and hours of brand new content. And all you have to do is turn it on. That's, that's kind of the miracle of radio. Um, and I think probably going one step further, all of it is curated for you as a member of their audience. So when you turn it on, you can just sit back and listen, and hopefully you'll hear something that you find interesting, thought-provoking, compelling, entertaining. Um, that's the nature of what radio is. Um, and so TuneIn as a platform has marked expertise in that, and it's radically different from what you might find on other streaming audio platforms today. And I think that most of the listeners that we have, and I think this is kind of a the brighter future that I see for radio, many of them don't necessarily want to be professional content curators. And so as you, you know, look at some of the other audio streaming platforms that exist around the world today, you know, they may have every song that's ever been published, but you as a listener have to do a lot of work to put together several hours worth of curated listening um, that you're going to enjoy and that you're going to feel compelled by. Um, and if you want to go ahead and understand what's happening in local politics or local sports while you're listening to music, uh, it's a very, very hard thing to do. Whereas radio, when you find a station that you like, when you find uh, a broadcaster that you connect with, it's purpose built to let you listen for hours and hours on end, um, never experience uh, ear fatigue, always hear something that's interesting and compelling, um, and continue to integrate it into your daily life. 
And so as a category, like what we do as a platform is just very, very different from a lot of what's out there. And I think uh, beyond the fact that it's new and fresh every day, that it's live on the platform, um, the fact that all the curation has been done for you by the station that you're listening to, you just get to sit back and enjoy it. I think given all of our busy lives, that's a pretty good deal. 100% with you. And if I was to ask you to take a peek into a virtual crystal ball, how do you foresee the future of the audio streaming industry evolving over the next few years, especially with the rise of new technologies, changing behaviors, et cetera? Is there anything you can share around how you see this industry heading? Well, I, I think that, you know, probably the, the, the two biggest things that I see on the horizon are one, you know, radio is a, very profitable, very large, you know, global contributor to the uh, uh, audio P and L of our lives. And what I mean by that is, you know, globally, radio is about a thirty, forty billion dollar industry, um, all in. How that crosses over from mostly terrestrial today to mostly digital tomorrow, and how that crossover benefits that P and L and allows radio to grow, um, that is a real big opportunity. And that that future has yet to be written. Radio has been stable for like the last 10 years. I mean, there are a lot of naysayers that said, oh my God, radio is going away. It's going to be replaced by streaming music or whatnot. Well, that didn't happen. Mm. But it also hasn't grown tremendously in that period of time. And I think we believe that digital transformation is key to unlocking new growth in the category. So that that's one thing that we're looking at. And then I think the second, you know, big kind of crystal ball, you know, uh, trend to look at is in emerging categories like streaming music and podcasting, um, will there be a business case that emerges for those services that starts to generate, you know, substantial predictable profitability in businesses that traffic in that content? And I think that, you know, uh, for at least the last decade, um, folks have looked at streaming music and they've looked at podcasts and said, my God, look at the growth in subscribers, look at the growth in listening. This is going to be a monster business. And, you know, what I think is happening today is people are saying, wow, there's, there's massive scale, but where are the profits? Um, if you're telling me that this is a good business to be in, where are the margins? And in the case of streaming music, um, it's been great for the record labels, um, but for the retailers and for the service providers, the Spotify's of the world and whatnot, it's still not immediately clear that there's a path to material profitability um, in that business, which may mean that there's yet another iteration that needs to happen um, to go ahead and build a business that over time can generate significant returns for an investor. Um, and very similarly with podcasts, I think that there's been a lot of excitement. There's been a lot of interest in that. There's certainly been a lot of growth in listeners, but you know, you see businesses like Spotify pulling back on their podcast investment, you know, the, the $200 million Joe Rogan deals, the, you know, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, um, bespoke podcasts. Because I think that those deals just haven't made money for them. Yeah. Um, and so I think that, well, the technology and the, the content is good. I think the business case and the business model uh, in podcasting is still under development. And I think as an industry, we're all going to be watching very keenly to see how that evolves. 100% with you. Incredible words to finish our podcast on today. But before I do... We started the podcast talking about your origin story, what put you on this path. But to finish the show today, I want to ask you to look back and reflect on your career because none of us are able to achieve any degree of success without a little help along the way. So I'm curious, is that a particular person that you're grateful towards who helped you get where you are today? Maybe they saw something in you, invested a little time. Who would that person be? Maybe we can give them a little shout out today. Oh, well, I'll tell you, um, there, there's a lot. I think yeah. you have a 30 minute podcast <laughs> on, on the gratitude front. But, you know, I, I would say that professionally speaking, I'm not going to limit it to just one, but I'll say that there's two groups of people. Yeah. One, um, I have 
just tremendous colleagues. And one of the reasons why I'm in this role is because, you know, in my past role as the chief product officer of TuneIn, um, I had a, a, not of TuneIn, of Audible, I had a really fantastic mentor named Sanjay Tabari, who constantly encouraged me um, to try to push my own boundaries and explore taking on larger leadership roles um, and encouraged me to, to look for an opportunity to become a CEO. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I ended up at TuneIn. And so I definitely like to thank Sanjay. Uh, he has been an incredible uh, uh, mentor to me. Um, and I can draw a direct line from you know where I was to where I am that has his fingerprints all over it. But I would say you know more fundamentally than that, Neil, um, it's really my family. Um, a lot of you know building a career means that you have to have you know a foundation outside of your professional life um, that's stable, that's nurturing, that allows you to put you know mind share into uh, these kinds of things. And I've got a fantastic family, and they've supported me a hundred percent. Love that. And for anyone listening, wanting to keep up to speed with some of the developments at TuneIn, I think everyone knows about what you do. And they're probably attached to many digital uh, assistants throughout the world as well. But for anyone just wanting to keep up to speed with the new developments, et cetera, is there any way you'd point everyone listening to? Just visit us at TuneIn.com or yeah. hit us up on our socials on Instagram or Twitter, and you'll see the, the latest and the greatest that we're working on. We're never shy about sharing fantastic well i'll add the link to that and uh, so people can find you nice and easy loved hearing more about your story and the great work that you're doing at tuning and where you're taking the company in the future as well incredibly cool i'd love to get you back on next year see how the things are evolving at tuning but more than anything just thank you for sharing your story today thanks for having me neil and i'd love to come back so a huge thank you to Rich for joining us today sharing his profound insights into the evolution and future of radio and also his leadership at TuneIn, marrying tradition with innovation. For me, it truly paints an exciting picture of what lies ahead in this much-loved and cherished medium. And it's evident for me as well that while technology continues to reshape the audio landscape, the essence of radio, that human connection, companionship and shared experience, that is what endures. So I do hope our conversation has given you a, a fresh perspective on the enduring relevance of radio in a digital world. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Did you grow up listening to the radio? Were you taping songs from radio chart rundowns? I'd love to hear all of them. Any memories around the world of radio, I'd love to hear from you. So please share them with me. Email me now, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, at Neil C. Hughes. Your favourite radio memory? What excites you about the role of technology and transforming the world of radio where it's heading love to hear your thoughts on any of those things and in fact anything at all but that's it for today so a big thank you for listening as always and until next time don't be a stranger Music.